Are you ready for part two? Well, here it comes. We are ready for part two of the tiny seed. Today, you will need three different types of seeds. It doesn't matter what types of seeds you have, as long as you have three different ones. And if you want more than three, that's fine too. Um, if you have a younger child at home, they may want to visit my youngest daughter's YouTube channel. It's called Playtime with Silly Sarah, and she's doing nursery rhymes and fun songs that you can dance to and pretend play, things like that. So if you don't mind, check it out and subscribe to her channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give me a big thumbs up and click the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Today, we're gonna be talking about the tiny seed. Now, this is a book by Eric Carle. He's one of my favorite authors. If your child is really young, you may want to take some of your seeds and just count for some um, fun math activity. Have them put one seed on number one, two seeds on number two, three seeds on number three, and so on until you get to 10. And then that way they are counting and they're also putting the seeds with the correct number. So they're seeing the number, they're touching the, the amount. It's a really good activity. Next, you can do a seed sort. Now again, a sorting activity is really good depending on how old your child is. And really even some older children would love to do this. So we're gonna sort our seeds. I got three different types of seeds. And I put them in a Ziploc bag. Now you don't have to go and get the cup if you don't want to, but I did get these. They were, there were several of them for a dollar at Dollar General. Then get a little cup full or even half a cup full. So you need to get three different types of seeds. Make sure at least one of them is a lima bean. So then you're gonna have your child, and this is even a good fine motor skill, have your child sort the seeds. So then they'll put them in, a diff in the different circles. And when they are finished, have them count it and write the number below. So there you are sorting the seeds and then they count the seeds. So again, it's a math activity. And to extend that math activity, I have a seed graph. So what they'll do here is they'll glue one seed in each column, one different seed. And then they'll glue all of the garbanzo beans here to see how many there are. They'll glue all the lima beans here, and then they can glue all the sunflower seeds there. Now, you don't have to have these exact types of seeds. This gives them a visual to see, which one did I have the most of? Which one did I have the least of? Again, we're bringing math into the science, and this is a, these are some good questions to ask your children. Well, how many more lima beans did I have than garbanzo beans? And you can start writing math problems. So there's a lot that you can do with your graph. And again, have them count how many and they can write the number below. And then you can have them write addition and subtraction facts based on their graph. Thing, an art activity that you could do with this is um, just on a piece of construction paper, have them use their seeds and they'll need more than this. Have them use their seeds to make a mosaic picture. To extend this book even further because the little seed did grow in to a plant and you're also gonna be watching the lima bean grow into a plant but you're gonna to wanna to talk about the life cycle of a flower. So here, you've got the seed, you've got when it germinates and you can still see the seed, then you've got when it's growing, growing, growing and adding more leaves, and then you've got it when 
it's a flower. So you'll want your child to color this, cut it out and put it one, two, three, and four. So you'll want them to put it in the correct spot on the paper so that they know the life cycle of the plant. Um, also, something else that would be fun to do is to get some different types of flower seeds like um, wildflower seeds and things like that and have them plant them in a pot and watch them grow. And then they've grown their own flowers. I know my girls loved growing their own flowers every spring and summer. They just think that's the neatest thing to watch them grow. And they get upset if somebody's grows faster than the others. It's kind of funny because we don't have any control over how fast those seeds grow, but still, they're like, I wanted mine to grow faster. <laughs> so silly. Now, the last thing that you'll do is have them make a picture of a flower. Now, I used a um, cupcake wrapper here and I cut a circle out in the middle. I pasted it in the cupcake wrapper. Now, if your child would rather draw this part, they can. Then I used actual seeds for where the seeds would be. I cut out a brown strip for the stem. I cut out two leaves and then I drew the roots at the bottom. And then all I did is I wrote the different parts of the plant. And what you would wanna do is have those written out and then have your child paste them in the right place. So you know that they know the parts of the flower. There are many, many activities that you can do um, using the book, The Tiny Seed and things for flowers. If you want to, you can go on Pinterest and look and see if there's something else that you would rather do other than the activities that I've suggested. These are just some fun activities that I have done with my own children and I've also done in the classroom. So I thought that they would be exciting for you to do, especially since we are stuck at home right now and they can't go to school. These would be some good extension activities that you could do in addition to. And it's fun and they love it. And it brings math and science and art all together in one. I hope that you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up. Um, click on those notifications so you know when I've uploaded a new video and I hope you're staying safe and staying well.